were just talking about the Bell numbers, which remember are the number of set partitions of one up to n of any size. So for example, we computed that b of three is five because there are five set partitions of the numbers one, two, and three. These are the ones of type one, 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 of type one, two, and of type three. These are a little bit different from permutations. If we were gonna count the number of permutations, we could also set partition them into the cycle type, but then when we have a cycle of size three, there are two factorial ways that we could order that. So the Bell numbers are gonna grow slower than permutations, but not a lot slower. And that tells us that if we wanna study them, it's a good idea to use the exponential generating function instead of the ordinary one. So let's define the exponential generating function for the Bell numbers as b of x. By definition, this is the sum over all n of the Bell numbers times x to the n divided by n factorial. That normalizes things so that they're not gonna grow too fast. So as we're trying to figure out how these go, let's think about what we know about the Bell numbers. Well, we found a nice recurrence relationship last time. So we're definitely gonna wanna use that. How did that go? We found that b of n plus one is equal to the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k b of k. So when we were um, playing with ordinary generating functions, we saw that using recurrence relationships was a great way to get a formula for the generating function. Let's do that again here. Only now I'm gonna notice that here I have b of n and I'm gonna be knocking it down to b of k, I'm oh, sorry, to um, n, from n plus one down to n. So this would become, give me something in terms of n minus one. That's a little unsatisfactory. So I wanna shift my indices here. And there are a couple ways that I can do it. I can shift indices either by multiplying by x on both sides or by differentiating. It takes a little bit of, a little bit of experience to see which is the better thing to do. And in this case, it turns out that what I actually wanna do is look at the derivative with respect to x of the generating function. How does that go? Well, again, it's just a generating function. So we can just take the derivative term by term. B of n is a constant, so it stays down. Speaking of constants, that constant term died, so we better start our indices at one, not at zero. Now, x to the n has derivative n, x to the n minus one. Thankfully, I have already killed my constant term, so this is true for n greater than or equal to one. And I'm gonna divide by n factorial because that's just a constant that I carry over. And now let's use a fairly simple fact, um, which is that n divided by n factorial is equal to one over n minus one factorial. That's a fairly simple fact, but it comes in handy right here. Um, let's maybe move our fact over so that we can have a little more room for the formula. So let's simplify this out a little bit and I get the sum n greater than or equal to one of b of n x to the n minus one divided by n minus one factorial. That looks pretty good, um, except that I'm starting my indices at one and I've got an n minus one. So really what I should do is I should change from n to n minus one. So my sum will then start at zero and here I'll get n's. This will then become an n plus one matching up here. So just doing this little shift of my indices, I get the sum from n greater than or equal to zero of b of n plus one, x to the n plus one minus one, and then we divide by n factorial. That's fantastic because now I can use my recurrence relationship. So that's what I'll do next. I'll plug in the recurrence. This is the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k b of k. And of course I need to keep the x to the n over n factorial. So now that I have this, I can say, okay, well, what, what could I possibly do um, with this side? So it turns out that this is a form that's very familiar when you're playing with generating functions. So let me write this over here maybe as a claim, and this will be part of your homework to work out the details of this claim. But if I have any generating function, exponential generating function, say f, the sum n greater than or equal to zero, f of n, x to the n, what happens when I take f of x and I multiply by e. Okay, if I just multiply this out, what do I get? I get the sum n greater than or equal to zero. The coefficients that I get are gonna be the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k f of k. 
multiply by x to the n over n factorial. So this is something that you're to prove for homework. So we're going to take it for granted that it's true. And now let's compare what we have here with what we have here. So this is just saying that, ah, we have our b's playing the role of f's. We have the binomial coefficient we want right here, and we've got the exponential part. So we can take this conclusion. This tells us that this whole generating function simplifies to b of x times e to the x. OK, well, we seem to have gone into the generating function, and now we've popped back out. So let's write down what we have. From beginning to end, we have b prime of x is equal to b of x e to the x. Now, how do we solve such a thing? First of all, let's isolate our b. So we have b prime of x divided by b of x is equal to e to the x. So now what are we going to do? Well, our next and final trick is that we're going to integrate. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to x and see what we get. OK, well, what happens when I integrate on the left-hand side? Well, I need to do a u substitution. Let's let u equal b of x. So if that's what u is, what is du? Well, it's the derivative, which is b prime of x dx, which is exactly what I see on top. So what I get on the left-hand side is just the integral of 1 over u du. And when I integrate e to the x, hopefully you remember this part from calculus, I'm just going to get e to the x plus a constant. And now integrating 1 over u, well, that's pretty easy. That's the natural log of u, which, of course, was b of x, equals e to the x plus c. Now, what's c? OK, now it's time for more homework c is actually equal to minus 1. How can you figure that out? You have everything that you need to figure it out now based on what you know about b of x and the terms in it and what you know about the series e to the x. So think about how you can derive this form and figure out that c is equal to minus 1. But let's take that as a fact. And now I'm going to exponentiate both sides of the equation to finish and get b of x is equal to e to the e to the x minus 1. This is our closed formula for the generating function, the exponential generating function of the Bell numbers. So here's where we started, and here's where we've ended up with the closed form, the reason being the nature of this recurrence relationship. So this fact over here is something that is incredibly useful to keep in mind whenever you're dealing with exponential generating functions. When you take products, you end up with binomial coefficients. So anytime you have binomial coefficients showing up, for example, in a recurrence relationship like this, you want to think to yourself, OK, I probably took a product of two generating functions. If you're lucky and you just have one type of coefficient showing up, then you just took a product with something simple like e, and you can solve it in this way.